Cats and wizards and witches They're here to stay, no they won't go away The undead can party all night Sup nerds, my name's Meredith, but you can call me Mare And today I have another book recommendation for you Today I will be giving a brief spoiler-free review of A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness Now as you may have discovered from this title this is a book about witches. I was genuinely pleased by how well the author researched witches before she wrote this. They aren't the Halloween stereotypes we're used to. For starters, they can join covens with other witches, but don't have to. And throughout the book, the witches are actually celebrating real recognized witch or Wiccan holidays like Samhain and Mabon. You might have even heard of these holidays before. Uh, I have because I watch uh, way too many Harmony Nice YouTube videos, so... However, witches aren't the only supernatural beings in this book. There are also demons. These aren't the demons that you would think of when you hear the word demon. They're not like the satanic kind, they're more of like, uh, ADHD musicians. Basically, imagine if EDM music took human form, that would be what demons are. And for anyone looking to relive their twi-hard glory days, there are also vampires in this novel. But instead of drinking animal blood like the Cullens, you can usually find them drinking copious amounts of expensive wine. Okay, they also drink blood, you know, to stay alive, but I cannot even exaggerate the number of times that the vampire characters in this book are drinking wine. They're drinking wine constantly. If you've ever read a John Green book, imagine any time a character smokes a cigarette, puts a cigarette in their mouth, is offered one, or goes near one. That's the number of times, almost, that you can find a vampire in this book drinking wine. I just don't get it. It seems like a little much to me. The main character of this book is Diana Bishop, who is the living embodiment of academia. Like seriously, at one point I was considering getting a PhD, but after reading this book I changed my mind because I felt like I lived through the whole thing by reading this book. Like, I don't need that experience anymore. I've already experienced it through the words of Deborah Harkness. Thank you very much. Incidentally, she already has her PhD and is like the youngest tenured professor at Yale or something like that, but that's not enough for her. She's actually spending, I think, a year at Oxford doing research there for another paper that she's working on. And in case you were curious, she researches the history of alchemy. But Diana is not only an academic, she is also a witch. And like every witch in every book ever, she is descended from a family of witches that lived in Salem. I know, I was shocked too. The other main character in this novel is Matthew Claremont, who is a professor and doctor and researcher and probably has as many, if not more, PhDs than Bruce Banner. And fair warning, during the course of the book he likes to give these long-winded scientific rants. My theory as to why he's talking about it so much in the book is that the author did a lot of scientific research trying to figure out some plausible explanation for the existence of the supernatural, and she was so proud of her research that she had to put all of it into the book, which is all fine and good, and it's very interesting and very thorough. However, when an unsuspecting biology major, like myself, has to read an entire page explaining mitochondrial DNA literally months after finishing a summer internship researching proteins that regulate the mitochondrial DNA, let's just say while reading that I was having some intense flashbacks about the smell of incubating bacteria and the sound of a centrifuge that I'm pretty sure was balanced, but it's making a weird noise right now. The story kicks off when Diana is, you guessed it, doing more research at the main library in Oxford, and so she calls up this book for her research on the history of alchemy. They pull this book up from the stacks, and she opens it, and she can tell that there's something weird and magical about it. It sends shockwaves across the supernatural world. And so these supernatural beings from all over the area, all over the world in fact, gather around Oxford and are trying to figure out who found this book and who opened it and who can get it back. Throughout the course of the book we're not sure if the different factions of supernatural creatures, uh, like the demons, the vampires, and the witches want to use it for good or for ill, but that's something you'll have to read and find out. Now I know some of you who are considering picking up this book might be considering picking it up because the TV show came out. It came out on a channel in the UK that's not available in America, and then it was available on the Sundance streaming service, which is how I watched it. And I think it's going to be available on AMC in, in the US in a few weeks. So if you're curious about whether the TV show is comparable to the book, I'll tell you. The glorious shots of Oxford, France, and Venice throughout the show are so aesthetically pleasing that it does distract you from some of the minor plot inconsistencies that happen in the show. Though overall, the TV show does really follow the plot of the book very closely. So if you enjoyed the book, you'll definitely like the show, and vice versa. 
Though I have to admit, my favorite part of the show was definitely the background music. It reminds me so much of the overdramatic indie music that you would hear in the TV show Rain. Remember that one from the CW, like, four years ago? It's very cheesy, but in my opinion, also absolutely fantastic, and probably my favorite musical genre. Overall, I would give this book a 4 out of 5. It was so well researched that it seemed very real and very plausible that it could happen, and I love it when books do that. I would recommend that you read it if you're in the mood for a witchy, supernatural love story. I have not read the other two books in the series, but I definitely plan on picking them up once I finish my undergraduate degree. That was my review of A Discovery of Witches. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've read the book, tell me what you think in the comments, and if you haven't read it, read it and then tell me what you think in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like me to <laughs> whine about more books. But until next time, I'll see ya when I see ya.